Everyone has his own path to God and his own Passover. That's what a lot of people say and think. But there is only one way to God. It's Christ. God has only one Passover, and Jesus is the Holy of God. Son of God, crucified in our place for our sins. He descended into hell in our place and was raised to life for our justification. By believing in him, we have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. This is the Christian Passover. Three Passovers are celebrated today. Jewish, pagan, and Christian. Jews on Passover remember their exodus and liberation from Egyptian slavery. Pilgrims from all over the world pray and cry at the Wailing Wall, the only one left after the destruction of the Jerusalem Temple, symbolizing that the old path to God is closed. God left the Temple on the day of the crucifixion of Christ. A new and living way to God has been opened. Now Jesus is our Passover. The opinion that everyone has his own Passover and his own path to God costs many lives. Those who draw near to God without discerning Christ, without purifying their souls, spirits, and bodies from sins and vices, get sick and fall asleep. This is how pagan Passover is celebrated today, in drunkenness and uncleanness. There, sacrifices are made to demons. People eat an idol offering made to the god of fertility in the form of a male sexual organ with eggs and semen. This communion with demons they call Passover. Such so-called own Passover is the way to the underworld, to the fiery flames of hell, where violence from demons and torment will not stop. If the phallus with eggs is in the center of the celebration, then the god of debauchery and fornication will lead the way to the fires of hell. And just like there are three Passovers, there are three churches, Jewish, pagan, and Christian. And you must understand that there are spiritual ages. The Apostle John said that there are little children, young men and fathers. And if we look at the first apostolic church, there were many Jews. But the first church was not called Jewish. Because when people come to Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile among them. Now it is a Christian apostolic church. And what happens in such a church? History shows that it was a spiritually mature church, the church of young men. And who are these young men? These are those who have the word of God and keep it. They have overcome the evil one, Satan. I am writing to you, fathers, says the Apostle John because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. What does it mean to overcome Satan? For example, when the Lord called us, we left everything we had, and went to the post-war region to serve and plant churches. We had the word of God, we planted it in different regions, and took souls from Satan. This means overcoming the evil one. The Lord opened churches through us from scratch, and these churches are still working, and souls have been taken from the devil. That's what it's like to defeat Satan. The young men overcame the evil one, because the word of God lived in us. Fathers are apostles, and we look through the Bible at the first church, it was so holy and so many miracles and the glory of God appeared in it that people were healed from the one shadow of the Apostle Peter. God's presence was so strong. Then, even when this church was persecuted and scattered over the earth, revival began to occur everywhere because in this church there were not children, but young men and fathers who knew the Heavenly Father and overcame the evil one. Therefore, they could call all the nations to the obedience that comes from faith because there were young men there and the church fathers were the apostles of the church. What are the churches today? Fleshly, worldly, pagan. What level are they on? Spiritually, they are children. They are at the stage of babies, or they are not spiritually born at all, still fleshly and sinful. They are also spiritually dead, warm, cooling down, and fading churches. And this is their difference from the early apostolic church, where there were spiritually mature people. Therefore, in the first church, Ananias and Sapphira died on the spot when they allowed Satan into their thoughts and lied to the Holy Spirit and the Apostle. And this is not the case in today's churches due to their immature age and different level of holiness compared to the first. Therefore, just as there are different Passovers, so there are different churches, and they have different spiritual ages. Today, many churches are filled with fleshly and soulish Christianity, and this is the kindergarten level. The problem is that there is enough of this fleshly Christianity at the level of the priesthood. 
spiritual immaturity, infancy and childishness in the clergy and leadership are manifested in the inability to take souls from the devil and conquer this world for Christ. This is why the priesthood, called, anointed, and confirmed by God for service, rather than set up by our own opinions and pride, becomes even more relevant in this perishing world. Such priesthood and worship are confirmed by the fruits, by many souls saved from the world, who became disciples of Jesus Christ and build His church. Ask yourself, what church are you in, pagan or Christian? What Passover do you celebrate? What is your spiritual age? Those who live according to the flesh are spiritually dead. Therefore there are so many infants, fleshly Christians, but very few young men and fathers. This is the great, great difference between churches, between Passovers and Christians. This is why Jesus Christ came, to give you the Holy Spirit, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you may begin a new life as children of God, and have eternal life, so that at all times you have quick, open, living access the way to God, that is to the Holy of Holies. Through Christ, through His blood, and through the Holy Spirit, this living path into the presence of God is open to you. There is no other way and no other name by which we can be saved. Subscribe to our Telegram channel Saltanenko to devote ourselves daily to the Apostles' teaching, to grow and to call all the nations to the obedience that comes from faith.